vijf liedjes, die kies je uit om te laten zien wie je bent. Dat is het basisidee van Five Essential Tracks. Maar deze is net weer even iets anders, want de man naast mij, die gebruikt vijf liedjes die hij gebruikt in zijn shows. Want hij geeft shows die unlike anything zijn die je ooit hebt gezien. Zijn naam is Dario, maar je kent hem als Younger. Yeah. Thank you for being in Five Essential Tracks. Awesome. Thank you. It's nice to be here. Um, I, I was just explaining that um, the five tracks that you've chosen, and who knows how many tracks you might end up with, uh, yeah. went up with because you got a lot of them stored in there, oh, okay, no, yeah. are the tracks that you... Um, well, uh, how do you call your um, uh, performing art? Uh, is it like mashing up or yeah, mixing? Or it's, it's a mix-up of remixes, bootlegs, originals. It's just whatever feels good in a show, whatever gets people dancing, smiling. That's all I like to do. Why that name and, and what's the difference between everything you've done before and you being younger? To be honest, everything that I do in Younger is taking bits and bobs that I've done in the past and, and everything that I'm learning now. But there's a lot of influences from, from my dad's music and from my first band's music. If I listen to a song, I can hear where I've come from in that song, which is great. Um, what did you say at the beginning of that question? You know, I, I don't, the name, why the oh, name Oh, the name, younger? that was it. It's my middle name. My middle name. Makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> my middle name is Younger, but with the E. Um, I recently asked my dad actually um, why I was called Younger, and he was like, "Because you were the younger brother." I was like, "Cool." Makes sense. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's let's start off. We, uh, we we've got at least five tracks to, to go for. Yeah. I'm just very curious to see w what kind of magic you can do with all, with all this. So well, let, this, this is only just, this just is start only, and show me what, this what is about it's about. A tenth of what I have on stage, but. This is one of the first tracks, Daydreamer. So I have, these are like the studio versions that I've got. Mm. So I just got the kick, obviously, in the, and all these knobs, like they fill, fuck with the filters. And then I have like the clap, and the tambourine, and I just build it. And then we can go to like the, which, That function. Yeah, I was starting. Sorry. Oh my god, good point. No, one more time is that one. Yeah, sorry. I'm jumping ahead. Yeah, something that just works in these tunes every time I do them, you know? <laughs> why, why this this music sounds better with you? What's what's to be honest, what's so good about this track? I was jamming, I was basically these chords, these ones. Uh, I had these chords in the studio, and no lie, this isn't a lie. On YouTube at the same time, that song was playing. It came on randomly. Yeah, but it was, the wrong, it was the wrong key. I had to pitch the key, <laughs> but I was like, that's a great idea. So I just, let's, let's, let's just use this. Let's just do that. So I threw those two things together. And then from that vocal, from the, I made this. So that's the same vocal, just pitched up and chopped up. And, but I usually play that in live because I have a little uh, novation pad control. Mm -hmm. So it's all chopped up. You're and surrounded I can, by it. Surrounded by it, yeah. Whatever, so right. it doesn't have to be it could be anything it could do anything it's cool it's, it's really creative and then you just drop into that vocal and everyone goes oh that's where it's from it's fun <laughs> track number two is let's do the craig david remix that i did so i got this it actually never was a craig david remix it originally started as an original song mm -hmm. um with these, with these chords And I had a, I wrote a top line on it, which wasn't Craig David, it was something else. And one day I just started singing Craig David, because he's, he's obviously the whole comeback thing. He's had the best comeback ever. If you don't know, as you need to wait, check Craig David as DJ. What he does live singer, mixer, wahnsinnig. I was just explaining what yeah. Craig David does on stage right now. Oh, he's great, as, yeah, as the a DJ, TF5 a singer, thing. singer, performer, whatever. He's doing his thing, yeah, it's really similar. And then the exact same idea, I took his vocal, Craig, Craigie D. 
Men det blir ikke And then we just groove it. And then I pick wow. up the bass and do my thing. I'm is your performance one continuous... Uh, uh, I try, I try to, to do that, but there's some songs that just don't link. So I, it's nice actually sometimes to have a gap, let people kind of clap, do the thing, mm -hmm. reset, and then you can start a different tempo. Track number three. So this is actually a studio version of a bootleg that I haven't released yet from Gorillaz. Mm -hmm. um, and I mashed up um, the Billie Jean drum beat of Michael Jackson. We got Billie Jean mixed up with Gorillaz. Yeah. There he is. And then... Bass line. Plastic Beach album? Yeah. Oh, uh, so uh, what's, what's so good about Gorillaz then? I just love their musical taste, They're just everything about it. You know, you hear a song, you, just, you can hear the influences, you can hear, you can hear when someone knows the shit, you know? And it's just, I don't know, I just love it. I just, I've grown up with it, because that's, that's an old track. I didn't realize how old it was, but it's just in my blood, it's just in, my, in, in there. So it felt right to just remix, and obviously I love Michael Jackson. I just think it's so amazing that, um, uh, you know, the, the, the Gorillaz are a lot of people, but especially Damon Albarn. Yeah, um, um, uh, we all know he started in Blur, but then he reinvents himself and do music with uh, the likes of, of uh, Bowie Womack, De La Soul, yeah. Snoop Dogg. I mean, how diverse can you be as an artist without losing your that, that's it. it's identity? Incredible. I don't know how he did it. It's incredible. It's just, it's just, it just shows that music runs through his veins, I think. It's just there, which is nice. Nice to see. I, and, and I have the feeling that um, um, uh, confining yourself to one genre is not something that you're into. No, no, that's, I think that's been my, from my upbringing. My dad has always mashed genres together. He calls it mongrel music. Mm -hmm. um, takes, takes it from everywhere and just mashes it all together. And I think, you know, I grew up in Manchester and um, actually I'm quite against, well, I wasn't against it. I never liked Oasis, I never liked Stone Roses, never liked all those bands from Manchester. I, 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 was, I always liked things that sounded a bit, I don't know, like mashed up things. Was it hard growing up in Manchester and not liking the Manchester sound? Yeah, a little bit, <laughs> a little bit. I literally lived about 10 minutes from Old Trafford. So I saw football hooligans walking past my, my door. And my dad's American, so mm -hmm. I, I was never into the football scene. I was, I was always kind of dreaming of different music and, and, and world, worldly sounds and things that didn't really fit into it, something, if that makes sense. It could have been because of the music your dad made, because there's nothing like the Manchester sound. Yeah, exactly. I think that was it. I was just born, I was just raised with it, you know. And he played me all those kind of all his influences, which have influenced me, which I hadn't realized until you listen back to it, or someone, or someone listens to it and goes, "Oh, that sounds like," and you're like, "Oh shit, it actually does." And I didn't realize. It's cool. I've lost count. Are we into track number four now? This might be four. Yeah. yeah. Next track. So this is um. This is another track I wrote, it was an original song. It actually had a Marvin Gaye sample on it, originally. Um, this is the Temper Trap. So I had these chords in the studio. And I was just jamming around. I, I bought a new synth. Um, so all these sounds are from that particular synth. It's a Korg Delta, so I was loving it. And then, you know, put some rhythm with the cowbells and the tambourines. You're never going with so much cowbells. Ah, oh, cowbells, the, the, the one. And then, I had this, so this guitar reminded me of, you know, the, the temperature, yeah. the, the sweet, yeah, that, so it reminded me of that, so I went onto YouTube quite illegally and just downloaded their vocal. 
Shh, don't tell them though. No. Don't tell anybody. No, I, I literally just robbed it from YouTube, pitched it up to Semi Zones, put it to this track, and it was the day before I was playing Morning Glory when I recorded it. So, and we decided, me and my manager were like, let's film that bootleg because it seems, seems like a cool thing. Um, and it went pretty viral. And it went crazy. Yeah. And I was just like, yeah, it can't, they kind of worked together. It was just. Have you heard anything from the band about this well, uh, rendition? They, they um, they they shared it, and well, they shared, it and they said this guy could potentially put us out of business. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you download their music illegally. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. They could sue me for all my money. But um, uh, it's really cool that they can't. It wasn't really that approval, but it's no, nice to know yeah. acknowledgement is kind of cool. It's, it's something else than, than sending a lawyer to your doorstep. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, if, if they share it, I think that's as good as a... Yeah, it was really nice and, and humbling. It's a stamp of approval. Yeah, it was cool. It's cool. I love that song. I love the band. It's, it's wicked. Yeah, man. Track number five. Last track, I was going to play you um, this guy. Out my system. I I was it scary? I mean, you've done a lot of these mashup bootlegs, whatever you may call it. Scary to do my own thing. Yeah. Absolutely. And spit it out. And Terrifying. Say, well, I do my own song. Terrifying, because you can hide behind somebody else's song when you're doing a remix or a bootleg. You can kind of, if someone's like, fuck you, sorry, I hate that song, you can go, oh, they wrote it. <laughs> it wasn't me, yeah. I, just, I just did a drum I beat. Just did the extra beat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but this time, it's it's you, so the comments that come back, are, they're coming right at you and the lyrics, you know, they're so personal to my life two years ago and going crazy, literally everything I say on that song, I, I pretty much did and it was an awesome time, I don't regret any of it and I think that's what makes a good song when, when it's real experiences. Yeah. And the music just came about because I don't know, I was in the studio, I was just feeling it with my sense and the groove, this is me. Um, This is a sample of my actual drum kit in the studio. I just laid it down and then you go. Funnily enough, when I was writing this, really weirdly, I was in, randomly, I was in India the, sure. the two weeks before, and they love their drones. Yeah. And I came back to, to, to London, and I was like, I love the idea of just like a note going through the whole thing. So if you heard that, you wouldn't necessarily think it goes with the chords, because it's just nice. It's really nice to put that under. Drone, you know? And the ah is a vocoder. And I love my, uh, my cheeky um, little melody on guitar because the truth is, guitar is my least favorite instrument. Is it? I, 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 drums first, piano's next, bass, and then guitar because my brother's always been the guitarist. So um, that one, if I get a nice little lick or if I get a nice chord, I can just stay there and just do that. So all, extra satisfying. Yeah, but it's it. I my guitar lines are notoriously simple. Mm -hmm. So just ding 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 ding, just over and over again, just loop it. Because I just like to find a groove and loop it. It's kind of like, you know, James Brown or Fela Kuti. They they find a groove, and they stick with it for 12 minutes, 15 minutes because it's, it's they just love it. It's just, it's just you don't so want to. Yeah, you don't want to change it. You just get in the groove, get your funk face on, and go for it. Was it hard? I mean. It, 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 you work with a lot of uh, existing zo uh, songs and, and yeah. uh, make your own by adding new stuff and new stuff and then and, and twitching and and, and uh, cutting it up and, and mm -hmm. throwing it all. Is it hard to stop yourself with your own song from yeah, yeah. over remixing, producing it. it? Yeah, totally. This song actually went through about six different versions. You know, it went somebody mixed it and then they changed a few things and I was like, ah, I don't like that. And then if you actually heard the original demo of it, the, the, the intro is about five seconds long, it's just that guitar, like a ding, 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 yeah, I could love you, and it just goes straight into the verse, and then I tried to play that live, and it was impossible, because I needed to loop everything, uh -huh, yeah, first, yeah, 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 yeah. to make, you know, so, because you're on your own on stage, yeah, because I'm on my own yeah. on stage, so, my only way of doing that was, I brought the chords in, and then I brought the drone in, and then you bring the guitar in, and then your drums and the bass, and it just made this big, nice intro, and you come in with the drums, and then you start the song. 
And there's so many people were like, because they said about that intro, it's quite long. There's no vocals in that Should intro. Should we cut this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah, but it, luckily, we just released it how it was because we weren't signed at the time. We are just like, let's put it out because that's how it works. Intro works. It builds me. It, it sounds like, just sounded like younger. Yeah. So it worked. Yeah, Thank man. you so much for uh, explaining all this to me. Absolutely. And selecting your five essential tracks. Absolutely. Thank you very much, bro. Thanks, man. All right.